Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here, and today I'm doing something slightly different. Uh, today I'm reviewing the new BenQ 4K DLP projector. Now BenQ kindly sent me this to review. Uh, they asked me if I would like uh, you know, a free projector, obviously of course to review it. I said, yes, <laughs> you can't turn down a 4K projector. Now this came out, I think a couple of months ago. This retails for 1,500 pounds, um, which is a bit pricey for some. Uh, most people uh, usually spend about maybe £800 max on, say, a, a TV such as this behind me, which is about 55 inch. Now, I last had a projector about eight, nine years ago. Um, so I had to go back and get a projector screen to give this projector its full potential. I've actually installed it on like a little desk because I can't put it on the ceiling because that would probably just come down and go and knock me out. So I've gone from 55 inch LG TV, 4K TV to a 85 inch projector screen. Going from like DVD to, to Blu-ray, you saw the leap in quality, you saw the detail. But going from Blu-ray to 4K Blu-ray, to me, th there isn't much of a leap. You, you do see extra bits of detail, but to, to the untrained eye, you don't really see a massive leap, especially on a, say, a 55-inch TV or maybe a 60-inch TV. Uh, because the upscaling technology is, say, upscaling Blu-ray to 4K, the technology's got pretty good. But seeing something that's pure 4K, um, it's not, the biggest leap but seeing something now on a ginormous screen going from 85 to 90 inch screen you can see the difference now richard's here with me today and he's been shooting some of the 4k footage on this projector so let's have a look now richard shot this on the dslr a 1080p camera so it's not a true representation of 4k and with it being dlp technology you do get that sort of video banding effect. And uh, when watching it, of course, you get that sort of like rainbow effect that flickers sometimes when you blink uh, too quickly or you turn your head too fast, but you get used to it very quickly. The projector does have the option to do 3D, but the glasses weren't supplied and have to be purchased separately. Um, and also I don't have any 3D movies, but if I did, I would probably try out Jaws 3D. What really impressed me the most was really the black levels and the brightness, you know, watching something like, you know, Ghost in the Shell, there was far more detail on display than, it, than there was on my TV. And Dunkirk itself, you know, with the IMAX footage and 70 millimeter kind of cinema scope format, it uh, really is a joy to watch in 4K. And it's definitely a perfect demo disc to show off to your friends. The projector does come with a nice remote, loads of buttons to press, and it glows up in the dark. So you can operate it with the lights off and the curtains closed. On the back of the projector, there's only a few inputs, a couple of HDMIs and VGA for sort of running laptops and PCs into it. No composite or S-Video, I'm afraid, so you can't run any retro consoles or laser disc into it. But thankfully, I have a video scaler, so you can plug in all, any old formats and just run it through HDMI. But it'll probably still look a bit crap anyway. Uh, I put on Robocop, the old 1080p uh, 4K remaster of the film. So it's not true 4K, but it comes from a 4K master. I put it on just to show Richard, so it'll keep him happy as he was filming. The menu on the projector is very easy to operate. The settings are very simple and it saves any of your adjustments very quickly. It doesn't take forever to, to store everything. It's very user friendly, which is very handy. I, I do have a few issues with the with the projector itself. I mean, it's not really the hardware. It's more about the HDMI lead that comes with it. It's only a meter long, so you'll have to invest in a longer one if you want to, if you want to install it on your ceiling or even just a, a short distance away from your home cinema setup. Now, another issue with the projector is the HDMI search function because it takes a while for it to find the signal. Either it's a HDMI kind of handshake issue, or because I'm using an HDMI kind of five meter lead, it's taking a while for the signal to sort of bounce back and for it to communicate with the projector. But I've used HDMI kind of five meter leads for ages and the TV communication to the Blu-ray and the receiver is perfectly fine. So I think maybe the, the software inside the projector may need to be updated like the firmware for it to create sort of better kind of uh, communication between the AV receiver and the projector. And another issue I found was having the projector set on like a table and you've got to project the image onto a projector screen or a wall. The little stands at the front where you can kind of make it kind of tip up a little bit so you can get the right angle. The little legs underneath are a little bit too short. So, I mean, there's enough space in the projector for it to be kind of double in length. So you, can, don't, you won't have to resort to having extra books. So I've got like beer mats under mine to sort of get it the right angle. 
But for me personally, I, I probably wouldn't use it that often. I mean, if, for example, you want, you've got friends coming around, let's say, let's, let's watch Blade Runner 2049, you get the projector out. But for doing, but for kind of casual viewing, um, you'd probably just stick to your TV because it takes you know, quite, requires a lot of effort to sort of bring it out, set it up. Um, but if you've got it installed and say on your ceiling, then you, you probably would use it far more often than I would. The risk of putting something on the ceiling where the projector itself is quite heavy, um, I'd be worried of it to sort of you know come off or fall down. So other than that, other from the lead being too short, um, you know the HDMI kind of handshake issue being slightly problematic, and the sort of practicality of projectors, which is kind of really a nitpick. I mean, if you've got the if you've got the room, you've got the equipment to install it, you're good to go. Other than that, I would highly recommend it. I mean, for the quality of the picture, the brightness, and the, the value for money, £1,500 for a projector of this quality in terms of 4K HDR, I was kind of really blown away. I mean, when I installed my 4K TV, got the 4K you know, Blu-ray player, watched the movie, I was like, the picture quality is very good. But I was always you know, constantly fiddling with the colours and the brightness to get it, to get it right. But with the projector, it was... Pfft, spot on i didn't have to do much so watching something like x-men apocalypse which is kind of really blown out with its colors especially on the tv this on the projector it just looked gorgeous um it's holding the reds didn't look too noisy and ghost in the shell you know that just looked so dark on the on the tv and like not enough detail was coming through but on the projector i could see all the extra detail probably down to the the brightness level of the of the of the lamp itself which gives out a stronger luminance um so yeah, I mean, if you've got the space and you've got the money, then I would highly recommend the BenQ 1700. Um, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's other brands out there at similar cost perhaps, but in terms of its uh, value for money and the, sort of the length of the lamp, which can go up to about 15,000 hours. It's a pretty good deal. So that was the whole thing I was worried about when I had my last projector. They could do about two or 3,000 hours. So you're always very, uh, conscious of how many hours you've used of the lamp. Am I going to, I mean, is it going to burn out? Is it going to blow up if I just go over, you know, f you know, over 200 hours over its kind of maximum? Um, I generally don't. Um, I've never had one in the past go poof, pop. Once it goes, you've got to pay generally over a hundred pounds or more for those lamps. I'm not sure about the lamps that are in the BenQ, how much the cost is of replacing them, but um, Hopefully, I won't have to replace it anytime soon and I can use it in the next coming years and still be happy with the brightness and not have to worry about it going exploding at the last minute. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are interested in getting the BenQ projector, there's a link below. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be reviewing any more products anytime soon. I do have to review some Blu-rays I'd hoped to review ages ago, but they'll be done uh, from our studio. Uh, so something more in, in line with sort of fixing in post but reviewing uh, the new kind of Arrow or Shout Factory releases which I did in the past. But yes, okay everyone, take care and goodbye. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to gain early access to my retrospective reviews, episodes of Fix It In Post and commentary podcasts, you can pledge to my Patreon. Thank you.